Lord, I worship you. Oh, Lord, we worship you in these places with our hearts, in sincerity, in spirit, and in truth. For you seek such to worship you. And we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you have sustained us until this present hour. You've kept us by your grace and your goodness, your love and your power. Thank you for sparing us. We say we belong to you. We are your people. You are our God. And we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, sing it again. Oh, I magnify you. Glorify your name and I worship you. Oh, yes, I do. to do this. We we're made to do this. And this is a big part of our future. Is that right? In the ages to come, come, around the throne, what do you think we're going to be doing? We're going to worship, worship our great God. Thank you, 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 oh, I worship you, Lord, I worship you, hallelujah, glory to God, well, it is a good thing to come together like this. Worship God, it's a, it's a preview. It's a little glimpse and taste of heaven. Hallelujah. You glad to be in church this morning with a bunch of like-minded fellow believers, faith buddies and friends surrounding you? It's wonderful, wonderful. Smile at somebody, let them know they're around nice people, friendly people, good people. Say, good to see you, good to be, good to be in church with you. <laughs> Whoa, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, praise you, Lord. Good morning. Right, well, and doing good, blessed. Yes, you are a blessed bunch. 
Well, welcome this morning to Faith Life Church. Do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? You can wave or stand if you'd like. It's your first time. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm not, not seeing anybody. All right. Well, well, welcome. Yes, so glad you joined us. Welcome online. Welcome in Sarasota. All our friends and family out there, we're so glad you joined us this morning. It's already off to a great start. Can't do better than worshiping our Father. Yes, amen. Well, just a few announcements to get started here. We've got our Greater Faith Conference right around the corner. Yes, February 6th through the 10th there in Sarasota, and it will be streaming live here in Branson. So um, make your plans to attend. Um, the hotel information is on our website. And also, church family, if you'd like to volunteer for the meeting, uh, be sure and go back to the information counter. Um, they've got uh, the sheets out there for you to sign up and let us know um, when you're available. And then also Vision Sunday, that's coming up also, so be getting ready for that. Um, we do have the forms out there. If you don't know what Vision Sunday is, um, they're out at the counter. You can get one on your way out today. And they're also online, also for, for you out there. And then um, in Sarasota, Monday and Tuesday, you're going to be planting flowers. So if you want to play in the dirt, just show up, 9 a.m., Monday and Tuesday. So it'll be a good time. You got an excuse to play in the dirt. Yes. So um, come on and help. And then also here in Branson, we have healing classes here that meet every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 10 a.m. next door in the Word Production Center. It's open to all, so come on. It's good to learn and be healed. Yes. Oh, oh. birthdays or anniversaries. I was going right into the testimonies. I was so excited about them today. You have any birthdays and anniversaries you've celebrated? Ah, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, 76. There you go, Mr. Willie. Happy birthday. Happy birthday back there. <gasps> Happy anniversary. Yes, Miss Marion, Mr. Larry, 10 years. Awesome. Congratulations. Yes, anybody else? We got anybody? All right. All right. Well, let's take a look at our sister. <clears throat> Good morning. We got some. Oh. 18? Yes. I can read. <laughs> 18. Congratulations. Oh, 76 years young. Yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday back there. Happy birthday. Our sweet family. Happy birthday. Is that Greg? Yes, happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, everybody. Wow, we got lots of Januaries. Well, wow, starting the year off right. Amen. Well, happy birthday, happy anniversary, everybody. Eat something fun. Celebrate. Yes. <clears throat> now, some really, <clears throat> excuse me, some good, great testimonies. Uh, this one, uh, one uh, this lady was listening online um, when Mrs. Moore was telling that testimony last week about uh, she was actually watching and driving, <laughs> watching Faith School. That's a no-no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. She, she um, laid her hands on herself because Brother Moore called out that cysts were being dissolved. And after 20 years, that cyst was gone. And this, this, um, this lady had, has had one for over 10 years and was listening and went to lay her hands on herself and was pre preparing to say what he's done for others, he's doing for me. Problem was, the, uh, the unmistakable lump was gone. <laughs> Praise God! Yes, glory to God. And then this is a Markov testimony. said, um, uh, during some personal uh, Bible study, uh, listening to Brother Moore and learning more about how to step out in faith, <clears throat> last week we did just that. Took a friend to a car auction. Well, the people running it came out and asked, asked us if we would put our minivan in the auction. He said, they are selling fast. Well, my wife and I prayed because we had no way home. So, <laughs> once clear in our heart, we did. At the auction, the van sold fast and for a high price. We were like, okay, God, what's next? Well, two hours later, a very nice car went real high in price. And then after that, this truck, which was on our vision list since 2012, came up. 
No one bid. So I felt like bidding 5,000. Well, going, going, no one bid. It was like they didn't see it. And it went home with us. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And this one, a mark off on their vision list. They paid their vehicle off one year early. Thank you, Lord. And then this one, as of November, or excuse me, December, they had paid off nearly $12,000 in credit card debt. And then this month, they're going to pay off um, about $4,000. So going be debt-free in that area, praise God. And this one comes from India. said, I'm so blessed because of your teaching. I'm your student in faith school. Sir, I wanted to say that a fear came in me. Fear to preach or teach or even tell about Jesus to the people. I was so much afraid that I was always thinking about me. But when I started attending your faith school, God helped me to come out of that fear. And I'm not afraid now of anything. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> and this one comes from Latvia. It's uh, as I listened to a Brother Moore song from Rama, uh, Rama meeting called Freedom, I got free from bad habits and I have peace. <laughs> Glory to God. Never, they, testimonies or, I mean, uh, teachings and things don't grow old, do they? They're just as powerful when, when you listen to them as the, when they were done. It's wonderful. And then this one said, I just heard the tithing series on YouTube. Oh my. I've been doing the wrong thing for years and years, thinking it was tithing. The session on where the tithe goes blessed me beyond words. Such peace and joy came over me, and now I know how God wants it done. What joy to honor him now with my tithe to my church. I've struggled for so many years with this issue and was doing what I wanted and not God's design for the tithe. I've been a Christian 50 years, and I'm learning as much at 76 years old. The Lord is gracious to me. Praise God. Let's stand up and thank the Lord this morning. You're never too old to learn. Right? God is so good to us. He, he'll meet us where we're at every time. Yes. Praise you, Father. We just give you all the glory for all these wonderful testimonies, Father, for paying off debt, meeting needs, healings. Father, mark offs on our vision list. We are excited about this year, Father. You are doing great and wonderful things. We give you all the glory, and we look so forward to this year, Father, of all that you're going to do. We give you all the praise for it, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Good things are happening. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you don't want to say, well, that never happens for me. Well, if you say so. But you could be saying something else like we do. Did you hear that testimony that while we were saying what he's done for others? Yeah. <laughs> a healing? Yeah. Same thing happened for that was it a woman? Yeah. Yes. Same thing happened for that woman right there while she was making the confession. Yes. It's so easy for God. Yes. So easy for, you don't have to heal yourself. You don't have to produce a miracle. All you got to do is believe he can yes. and, and be, believe you receive. Say it out loud. What he's done for others, he's, done for he's doing for me. me. Do you hear about that vehicle deal? And, huh? Did you hear about paying things off a year early? And yes. Say it again. What he's done for the others, for others. He's, doing for he's doing for me. For me. In these days. Yes. And greater things than these, greater things than these shall, we shall we see. All the glory. All the glory. All the glory. Be to my good God. Lord, we worship you. We thank you so much. We're rejoicing with our brothers and sisters over these good things, and we're expecting a whole lot more. And we'll tell everybody that'll listen that you did it and how good you are. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can be seated. It's uh, offering time again. And uh, around here, we enjoy offering. And we are living proof that these things work. Our churches and our ministries are, are so blessed, in such good shape. Um, look with me in the book of Psalms, 
Psalm 4, we're going to look at a couple of verses. Um, we're in the beginning of a new year. You heard uh, Ms. Kim talk about Vision Sunday. And um, that's, not, that, that, that's not anybody asking you for anything. This is just helping you personally do what the scripture said. Faith must be focused. Uh, you need to have at least a general idea of what you're believing for. Otherwise, when it came to pass, how would you know that it even happened? So uh, the scripture says, write the vision, make it plain. In uh, Psalm 4, verse 1, they'll put it on the screen for us. Psalm 4, verse 1, it says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have enlarged me. When I was in distress, have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Did you hear that phrase, you have enlarged me? This is something that God does. We are not limited as far as what we are, uh, what we're created to be. You can, through wrong believing and doubt and unbelief, actually limit yourself and limit God. As to what he, you won't limit him and who and what he is, but you can limit what he does in your life. And that's a, bad, that's a big mistake, right? But uh, what has to happen in being uh, in enlargement, it is heart enlargement. It is enlargement on the inside of your vision and your faith, your expectation. Let's read another couple of verses here. Said out loud, you, you have enlarged me. Yeah. In Psalm 1819, 1819, it says, You brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Well, if he brought you into a large place, he delivered you from tininess. He delivered you from smallness. He delivered you from no room. Huh? Being scrunched is not being blessed. Huh? God's uh, will is more than enough. Is it true? More than enough. And his, another word for enlarged is roomy. Roomy. Huh? Do you like it or not? How many like a roomy place to live? A, a roomy, roomy bed. Roomy bed spread. Is that right? Roomy kitchen. You know? One of these tiny apartments, man, you can touch both walls you know, in the kitchen. And, uh, and that's okay. I mean, that's better than being on the street now, right? I mean, to have any kind of place to stay, but do you have to stay there? Or could you have a vision to enlarge, to reach further, to reach higher, and to have more room? To have more room. Huh? How about a, a, a three-bedroom apartment yeah. instead of a one-bedroom? Yeah. How about a, a, a house of your own? Two, yeah. huh? Two-bedroom. How about a, a, a five-bedroom house with ten acres? Yeah. Am I losing somebody? I'm, huh? How about a ten-bedroom house with a with a hundred acres? Now, now, at any point, if you say, that's, that's just too much. Well, for you, it's too much. But are, are you sacrificing because of God's limit on you? Well, who would you be sacrificing for? Or would it be a blessing when a week of increase comes or uh, greater faith comes and, and you could have uh, 20 people stay with you? What'd be wrong with that? And loan them three or four of your cars <laughs> while they're there and feed them all. Yeah. What'd be wrong with that? Yeah. 
So Mr. Well, I don't have room. Exactly. That's, that's, what, that's what we're talking about. You don't have room. But could you? If you say, I, I don't, you know, I don't care about that. I don't want to fool with that. If I got enough for me and mine, that sounds pretty selfish. All I need is enough for me and mine. <laughs> That's another message. Um, <laughs> you've enlarged me. 118.5 in the Psalms. The, the, you'll see this, these phrases more than once. Psalm 118 and 5. He said, I called upon the Lord in distress. And the Lord answered me and did what? Huh? I called on the Lord because I was squeezed. I was in distress. Right? It was too tight. Y'all going to help me preach this or not? It was too tight. And I was stressed and in distress and too squeezed. Huh? Yeah. Now we talk about uh, money like that, don't we? Yeah. How's your finances? Tight. Mm. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Too tight. It's like a shoe that's a size or two too small. Oh, right. right? What does that mean? Not enough shoe. That's right. That's right. That's right. Not enough room. Yeah. Right? Tight. Not enough money. Yes. Keep reading it. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and said, now that's just good enough. You just be happy with that. Huh? No, no. He set me in a full gospel place. <laughs> Hallelujah. The fullness of the blessing of the gospel. He set me in a roomy where I could spread out. Huh? A car where my elbow's not touching somebody when I ride. Huh? <laughs> the Lord answered me and set me in a big, wide, roomy, large place. I'm telling you, that's God's will for you. That's God's will in 2023. It's always been his will. That's God's will that this year you break out. You break out on the left, on the right. Enlarge the space. <laughs> Sometimes people have wondered about our auditoriums, you know. <laughs> and they say, well... Man, you know, you look like you got some space in there. We do. That's right. You put a thousand people in here, doesn't look, doesn't look like it's that many people here. Why? Because we like room. Yes. We like room. Yes. And when we have a meeting and all our friends come, we got room. Yes. Is that right? Yes. We got a big portico. Yes. We got parking. Yes. Got a big place out there to eat and have our barbecues. Yes. That's right. It's the will of God. That's right. It's the will of God at your house too. Room. You don't have to be scratched. Look in 2 Corinthians 10. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 10. Let's talk about how to do it. How to affect it. This is New Testament. 2 Corinthians 10, 15. 10, 15. How do you do it. How do you get from where you are to tight and restricted and limited to roomy and large? He said, not boasting of things without our measure, that is of other men's labors, but having hope or expectation when your faith is increased, we shall be what? Enlarged. By you, according to our rule, our measure, abundantly. When will you be enlarged? When your faith is increased. Which is why you need to uh, have your faith fed. You need to feed things that encourage you and build up your faith. And you need to be around people that have even more faith than you. Yes. To inspire you. 
And you need to be around people with bigger vision. And you need to not be afraid of bigger prices. Hmm? You, 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 there, there'll have to be, there, there, there's two big things that you got to do to enlarge in your life. It has to be an enlargement in your heart first, in your vision and in your faith. But then faith without an action is dead. And so the two big things that you do to exercise that is in your giving and in your receiving. Huh? You, that, that's why, that's one of the reasons we have, you know, week of increase, we have great offering day. And, and those of us that have been doing this for some time, we all, we're always looking to increase. And we're, we're, there was a time that we had never sown, you know, $100 back years ago at one time. And we did that. And then there's a time we'd never sowed 1000 never sowed 10000 or never sowed 100000 And you've got to keep going. If you, if you ever get to the point, you go, well, that's too much. Well, you're, you'll not enlarge anymore. Right. You're stuck. If you can't get it out of the opening of your heart, then you can't get it in. You receive through the same opening. When your heart's enlarged. And one of the ways you expand is the Lord will direct you to sow something. And it's not just at church. It can be on the job. It could be to a neighbor. It could be to a family member. But he'll deal with you to sow something that's bigger than you've ever sown before. And if you choke on it, well, then you won't be enlarged. It's too quiet. Huh? But, and this, this will never stop your whole life long. This, this, if it stops, it's because you stopped enlarging. And you got to watch about that phrase. Did you hear that phrase? That's just too much. That's the indication you're stuck. You're not enlarged. Either side of it, whether it's too much to give or too much to receive. Too much to buy, too much to get a hold of. How much does that cost? You need to not only be sowing bigger, bigger things and increments that you've ever sown before, not just randomly now, at the direction of the Lord. After you've prayed, after you've looked at it, after you've made sure. Because it's possible to miss God and waste a seed. You, you want to you uh, listen to Him and wait on Him. But then also... There'll be times he'll lead you, uh, you know, to, to believe for one of those. Right. And it costs more than any, you've ever paid for one of those. Yes. Huh? Or you've never had one of those. Yes. And you'll think, well, I, I don't need it. It's not all about need. It's faith that pleases him. Yes. And like we already said, you know, it, it, it increases your ability to do for others. And so you got to reach out and believe to get that thing that's three prices more than you've ever done before. Huh? And once you do that and you have done that now, it doesn't look so big to you. You are enlarging in your heart and your faith and your vision and on both sides of it. You keep giving bigger and bigger and more and more. You keep receiving and getting bigger and bigger and more and more. And your ability to bless enlarges and increases. And what looks like that you could never have even gotten, now it's easy for you to give it away and sow it. You got to get used to bigger figures, used to bigger things instead of just going, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's just crazy. For who? For who? They make them for somebody. Somebody's buying them. Somebody said, they ain't worth that. Well, it is to somebody. Right? And, and you can have all these ideas about where your limits are and where your lines are, but who are you doing it for? Who's it helping for you to restrict that? Say so like the psalmist, Selah. Think about that. Ponder that. Well, how many, how many would just agree that it is the will of God to enlarge? He is the God of increase. 
Say it out loud. Father God, Father God enlarge, me enlarge me on the inside, on the inside. In, my heart, in my heart, in my faith, in my, faith. In my, vision, in my vision, in my giving, in my, giving. In my receiving, in my having and doing and being, I yield myself to you. I seek enlargement from on high. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Okay. All right. So next thing you know, Kim, you'll be reading bigger testimonies. Bigger. I mean, it'll just keep growing and growing until we'll look at each other and go, whoo, that's big, that's big, that's big. But can it get too big for our God? It's no way, no how. Well, if you want to get involved in the offerings uh, this, this morning by cash or credit card, raise your hand, take an envelope, put up on the screen our uh, Go Supply and Word Supply while we're doing this. Go Supply is well supplied. We're doing great. We're, uh, uh, that covers all of our travels. We're, we'll be traveling some this week and uh, we're making plans through. We've already got several meetings scheduled throughout the year and this covers all of that. Then the uh, word supply, this is all of our materials. Uh, we're sending out things all the time. It costs thousands of dollars a day to do that, but it costs the people that receive it nothing because it's underwritten by our church families and by all of our uh, partners, more life partners. Yeah. So the word supply is well supplied. The go yeah. supply is well supplied. All the bills are paid. Yeah. All the needs are met. Yeah. All the debts are paid off. Yeah. And if you sowed into that, you got a right to believe for like kind, a harvest of the very same thing. So if you want to sow to one of those things, go supply, word supply, designate that. Uh, if you don't designate, that's good too. It'll just go to general operations and a substantial percentage of the general fund goes outside of our walls. It goes to other ministries, other outreaches, uh, a substantial portion. We're tithing churches and, and you heard testimony about tithing. We've got a, a new book called Tithing Today and it's online. There's no charge for it. And if you've got questions, if you haven't studied these things, you ought to. It is very significant. It's not just, it's not about keeping a rule. It's not about the law. It's about honoring God and giving him access, uh, full access into your affairs. How many want God in your business? All in your business. Well, there's a reason why he's not in everybody's business. You need to find out about that. So uh, it has to do with putting him first, honoring him. If you don't have an envelope for cash giving, raise your hand. Make it out a check. Make it out to FLC. That stands for Faith Life Church. And when you're ready, go ahead and stand. If you're writing, take your time and finish writing and then stand. And, you know, Phyllis and I, you, you don't want to, even with your church giving, we're talking about increase, you don't want to just do the same thing by rote mechanically for years and years. Uh, you want to believe to increase. And one of the things that Phyllis and I have done is ever so often, we say, okay, our, our, our faith is here. We're going to increase to a bigger increment. Because if you sow in tens, you reap in tens. You sow in hundreds, you reap in hundreds. You sow in thousands, you reap in thousands. You sow in tens of thousands, you reap in multiplied tens of thousands. This, the Lord has left it up to us. According as a person purposes in their heart, so let them give. And um, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, according to what you sowed. And don't despise a small seed now either. Uh, just um, uh, the big thing is as your faith increases. Don't do something beyond your faith. Do it according to your faith. What you have confidence for. What you feel quickened about. The biggest thing in all this is being led by the Spirit. And if you don't want to do something in your heart, it's not even pleasing to the Lord. Right. It's not because somebody pulled on you about it. No, you got to, it's got to be completely willing, glad. God loves <laughs> cheerful. <laughs> glad, amplified says glad to do it, prompt to do it. Yep. Giver. Is that us? Yep. 
That's us. Hallelujah. Let me see. Give a little elbow room here. Okay, just. All right. That's what we're talking about. Enlargement is God's will. <laughs> Say it out loud. Thank you, Father, Thank you, Father for, being my source. for being my source. Unlimited. Unlimited. Unfailing. Unfailing. Because the Lord is my good shepherd. Good shepherd. I, do I do not lack. I do not want, do not want for, any good thing. for any good thing. But we always, we always have, more enough have more than enough and plenty to give. Plenty to give. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For increasing us more and more, us and our children, for blessing us big and making us a big blessing to a lot of people, to your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, we speak over the people as they bring these things to you, and we say, be increased, be enlarged. More and more in every good way and in every good thing. We speak, we bless you and speak increase over you in the name of the head of the church, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody said out loud, I am, I am anointed, anointed, blessed, blessed to, prosper to prosper and increase and, increase and, succeed, and succeed to God's glory. What's going on in the Faith Life family? I'm getting my buildings, lands, houses, my vehicles, my equipments, everything we need to do everything we need to do. Do it on a high level, a good witness after a godly sort. What else is going on? All of my debts are being reduced and eliminated. The Lord's bringing us into the best shape of our lives thus far. I claim extra coming in now. I'm paying off everything quickly. Anything that's got a note on it, got a debt on it, you ought to rename it. Now somebody said, what kind of car is that? It's a paid for. Huh? It's a, what style house is that paid for? It's paid for house. Paid for, call it paid for. Faith calls those things, even that be not yet, as though they already were. Hallelujah. Now, it's not enough just to hear that. When you go back home after church today, and you're riding in your car, you say, man, ain't this a nice paid for car? This is a paid for car. Huh? When you pull up in your driveway or you pull up at your apartment, your condo, whatever it is, what do you say? Would you look at that? It's a paid for. I call it paid for. Paid off. Call it. You need to do that on a regular basis. Why? Because you need to hear it. You need to hear it. Faith comes by hearing. You need to say that and say that till it just becomes a part of you. You don't see it any other way. That's how you see it. What else is going on? He's bringing into our hands seed, even some great big whopper chunk seeds. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Ushers, wait on the people.
Something's on me. Something's on me. Woo. Failure's not for me. It's not, it's not for me. That's for somebody else that don't believe it. So, Father, all of us here in Sarasota and everybody joining us online, we believe in you. We trust you. We seek your face. We seek to hear your words to know you and your ways and your will and your plan for us. We ask for it. We ask for the direction and the help for right now, for the utterance and anointing and the supply of your spirit and the quickening and ministering of your spirit in every heart, mind, soul, body. We ask for it in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And of course, as always, the only people that get results are the doers. So say it out loud again. I'm a doer. Not a hearer only. I'm a doer. Not a forgetful hearer. I'm a doer of the word of God. That's the people that get results. You can be seated. Go to Acts, please, the, uh, looking at scripture that we've looked at for some weeks now in this series. Acts 20 is where we're going. We've been talking about faithful to finish. Faithful to finish. And um, we asked the question, is it too early to be thinking about finishing up. Somebody said, finishing what, Brother Keith? This life. This life. They tell us that every second, almost the numbers work out, two people die somewhere across the planet. Every second. Two people uh, leave here. The scripture uses the word depart. They don't, they didn't cease to exist. People, you know, you can believe all kinds of stuff if you're not a believer in the word, but the scripture tells us what happens. The spirit leaves the body just like a hand comes out of a glove. Well, when the hand comes out of the glove, the glove has no life in it apart from the hand. It's just going to lay there. And so um, it's not accurate and correct to go out to the cemetery and try to talk to people that have passed on. They're not there. I said, they're not there. It's an empty shell. And they did not cease to exist. If they were saved, they went up to, and departed to be with the Lord, which the scripture said is far better than being here. Not everyone who dies goes to heaven. To hear people talk, you would think they do, but it's simply not what the Bible teaches. If you don't want God, there's only one other group to be a part of. If you don't want to be with God and his people, if you don't believe in him, then you don't go up when you die. You go down. And that's, people don't like to hear that, but you either believe the Bible or you don't. How many are glad you are a believer? And your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And it don't take long to die now. I mean, if your heart stopped beating right now, boom. I mean, in seconds, you're out of here. That body falls over and your spirit comes right out of there. And one of these days, the Lord tears is coming. You're going to leave here. How, how much longer till you do? You might say, well, it'll be a long time. It's not guaranteed. 
And if you're going to walk with him, he'll give you a long life. But even that, I mean, if you live a hundred plus years, it's the blink of an eye. Right? Huh? So this life is very, very brief. Very short. And should we already be thinking about finishing it up? You should be. If you're wise, you're going to be thinking about what am I here for? And what is God's plan and place, placement and will for my life? Am I doing it? I want to finish what I'm supposed to do before I get out of here. Hmm? You can get caught up with all the stuff in this life and not do that. But if you're smart, if you're wise, if we are, we will focus on his plan. In Acts 20 and 22, Acts 20, 22, Paul said by the spirit, behold, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save or accept that the Holy Spirit witnesses in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me or are waiting on me there. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear to myself so that I might what? Finish my course with joy. Now the joy of the Lord is your strength. So finishing your course with joy is finishing strong. Hallelujah. Not, not going out with a whimper. Going out with a shout. Finishing well. Finishing strong. So he, he said, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. My, my main thing is not saving my life and living my life. My, my thing is finishing my course. That's why I'm alive. That's why I exist. It's not about, can I squeeze out another year down here? Can I, you know, no. It's, am I doing what I was made to do? And am I, am I going to finish it? Go to 2 Timothy, if you would, the fourth chapter. 2 Timothy 4. And I'm reading this out of the complete Jewish, if we have that one. I'm not sure if we do or not. If we do, you can put it up. Otherwise, I'll just read it. The CJB. Complete Jewish Bible. Uh, 2 Timothy 4.1. He said, I solemnly charge you before God and the Messiah, Yeshua, who will judge the living and dead when he appears and establishes his kingdom. Proclaim the word. Be on hand whether the time seems right or not. King James says in, in season, out of season. Convict, censure, exhort with unfailing patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not have patience for sound teaching. Uh, boy, we're definitely in an impatient generation now, aren't we? <laughs> Somebody's telling me the other day that they, on these uh, uh, web page and, and sites and stuff, they've found out that if somebody doesn't see something they like with about, within about 10 seconds, then they look for something else. Wow. Now that's short patience. <clears throat> Said... Uh, um, Verse, verse five, but you remain steady in every situation. Everybody say, stay steady. Stay steady. He said, re, the, this version says, remain steady. Stay steady in every situation. Endure suffering. Do the work that a, a proclaimer of the good news should. Do everything your service to God requires. Does that sound like finishing your course? Yeah. Do everything your service to God requires. Now, believers are not supposed to just come to church, sit, listen, and leave. Every believer is supposed to render some kind of service to the church. That's one of the reasons we have all the teams that we have. We've got parking lot team, we got children's team, praise team, clean team, flower team, visitation team, transportation team, hospitality team, food team, on and on and on. Why? Because there's all these things that need to be done 
And there's all these believers who need to be rendering service. And I realize that there's a whole lot of people don't even go to church. And then a lot of them that do, they never do anything except show up, listen, leave. That's not service. That's you being serviced. That's you being fed. That's you being ministered to. And all these people ministered to you. They cleaned the place before you came. They met you. They did all the things that need to be done. And the music people and the singers ministered to you. And and all of these things. But you will not be satisfied. And I won't be satisfied. Unless we are using the graces, the things we have, our time, our strength, our talents, and our treasure. To be rendering some kind of service that's ministering to God's people. And something that's helping get the good news out, reaching the unsaved. Y'all with me, church? If you're not doing that somehow, you are dissatisfied. I don't even have to talk to you. (laughs) If you're not doing that somehow, you are unfulfilled. You are dissatisfied and probably bored a lot of the time. Hmm? Because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. The Lord is building his church. Yes, he is. And there are thousands of things that need to be done to make that happen. My part is speaking. I have a speaking grace, but that's not most of the body. Most of the body is not speaking. Now, everybody's supposed to be a witness and be ready to share one-on-one what God's done for you. But you don't have to preach and you don't have to, you know, do the things that we do. But everybody is supposed to be doing something. Notice what he said. Do everything that your, uh, your service to God requires. Say it out loud. Do everything. Your service to God requires. Verse 6, he said, as for me, I'm ready, uh, already being poured out on the altar. The time for my departure has arrived. He knew I'm there. What does that mean? Within days or weeks or whatever of leaving this life, leaving this world. And prayers get previews. If you walk, you know, at least reasonably close with God, and pray and commune with him, you'll know when you're getting close to time to leave it. Now, sadly, a lot of people leave early. They leave before they should have gone. And we won't get into all that, but uh, if you walk with him, then you'll be kept, you'll be protected. If you need to be healed, you'll be healed. Y'all listening? Until you finish your course, run your race. And that's what he said. He said, the time of my departure has arrived. Verse seven, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And what awaits me now is the crown of righteousness. Not to me only, but all those that long for him to appear. Now, the, uh, in the original languages, the, the Hebrew and Greek and those older languages, uh, the construction's different from ours. Like uh, the, the, the English would say, I have fought uh, the good fight. Well, the construction on the older language is, it starts out with the subject. The good fight, I have fought. Yes. That's how it's worded. Yeah. And it's actually... Uh, You want to say it's backwards, but we're the ones that came later (laughs) and changed it. So, um, but I kind of like that, don't you? So really what he said, the good fight, I have fought. The race, I have finished. The faith, I have kept. I like saying it like that, don't you? Don't you like saying it like that? It actually works real good because without starting out about what you did, and we don't even know what you're talking about yet, I have fought 
Okay, okay, okay. The fight, all right. No, you tell us the fight. Okay, now we know what you're talking about. What did you do? I fought it. <laughs> the race, I ran it. I finished it. And the faith, I've kept it. Why would you need to say that? Because not everybody does. Go with me, if you would, to uh, 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1. The faith, he said, I have kept. This scripture says the Spirit speaks expressly, very specifically and pointedly and clearly, that in the latter times, how many would think we, we must be in that? This is... Long time after this, so in the latter times, some shall what? Depart from the faith. How many understand you couldn't depart from Branson and you never been in Branson? <laughs> if you say, well, I, I departed Branson on Wednesday and they say, well, uh, what were you doing there? Oh, I wasn't there. Well, then you didn't depart from Branson. You got to be in Branson to leave Branson. Depart means leave. So what does this mean? These people were in the faith and left it. These are not people that never, never knew God. These are not people who were never born again. The Spirit speaks expressly in the latter times, some will do what? Depart from the faith. We would say leave. Yeah. Or you could even say forsake. Yeah. Yeah. Leave the faith, forsake the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines, that were devil's word for demons, teachings of demons. You got to watch what you listen to. And you got to watch who you hang around. Not everything that's called Bible teaching is right. Even if they use some scriptures. That's what's tricky about it. Do you remember that the enemy quoted scripture when he was trying to deceive and tempt Jesus? And he quoted the scripture correctly. But he tried to apply it in a wrong way. And so it's not just that somebody is quoting a verse. What spirit are they of? Very important. And the, the, the wonderful thing is, if you're born again, you've got the Holy Spirit inside you. And if you'll pay attention to him, you will recognize the same spirit in others. And you'll recognize when he's not there either. Even though it's something intellectual, even maybe intriguing, that doesn't make it God. And so he said people would be listening to the wrong things and they would leave the faith. Look in uh, 2 Thessalonians 2. This is New Testament. This is something that has been prophesied and foretold. And you can certainly see it. There always, there's always been some of this ever since the beginning days of the church in the book of Acts. But he specifically says in the latter times, you're going to see even more of it. What is that? People that came in, that got saved, that were stirred up, and then got cold and just left and quit praying and quit reading their Bible and quit going to church and left the faith. What did Paul say? I have kept the faith. What did they do? They, they departed from the faith. You, you can begin to see why he made that statement. It, you, you'll see this. Uh, Phyllis and I have now been in the ministry over 40 years. And um, it's one of the saddest things we've seen. 
is that there were people we went to Bible school with back in the 80s, early 80s, you know, 81 and 2 and 3 and all like that, that were just, I mean, you talk about fired up about the things of God and, and, and 10, 15, 20 years later, not even in the ministry anymore, don't, don't believe it anymore. Some people preach against what they used to preach for. They departed. They left it. And, and, and what church that's been around any length of time could you find that hasn't had some of the same thing? People coming, got stirred up. Where are they now? Hadn't seen them in years. Now, if they went on and did greater things for God, if they're in another church and they're stirred up even more, well, okay, go get them. But that ain't the case. Again and again, they're not going to church anywhere. They're not doing anything for God. So that can't be God. Y'all listening to me, church. Somebody's missing it big time. They departed from the faith. They left it. Here he said in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. He said, let no, let no man deceive you by any means. Did you know there are numerous exhortations in the scripture not to let anybody deceive you? Huh? That must be a danger. Right? Or you wouldn't keep hearing it over. Jesus said it repeatedly. And the Spirit of God through apostles and prophets said it repeatedly. Don't be deceived. Don't let any, anybody deceive you. Don't be uh, taken in. In other words, don't, don't believe something that's not true. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Now this word falling away is the word for forsaking. And apostasy, the, the BBE, the basic English says, give no belief to false words, verse 3, there will first be a falling away from the faith and the revelation of the man of sin, the son of destruction. Those things happen later. And so sadly, uh, that we've seen some of that. And you've got to be prepared to see more of it. But you can't control other people. Y'all are too quiet. Is this New Testament? Should we read it and think about it and talk about it? Why am I talking about it? Because I want you to keep the faith. Hallelujah. And, and that's a, we're still talking about finishing your course. How are you going to finish your course for God and you don't keep the faith? A big part of you finishing your course is just not quitting. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> just, just keep showing up. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Just, just keep on getting up, opening your eyes and saying, God, I believe in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Keep opening your Bible and reading your chapter and Keep praying and praying in the spirit and coming to church and coming to meetings and hanging out with fellow believers and volunteering for things and giving. And, huh? Be in, not out. Not half in, half out. Not undecided. Not wondering about it. Not every other week, month talking about, I just don't know if I can keep on with this. I've had preachers tell me, you know, I just, I'm thinking about quitting. Somebody says, you know, haven't you ever been tempted to quit? Never. Never. You know why? I won't entertain it. I, I could get just as discouraged as anybody, anytime, anywhere, but the Lord's helped me. To see anything that would try to distract me, I shut it down. I slam it down. I say no. God has done too much for Keithy boy. Huh? God brought me 
out of obscurity and poverty and ignorance and let me rub shoulders with his generals and his people. Let me have a place and an opportunity to handle his holy word. He put his holy anointing on me. He's given me in the church and the ministry everything we ever asked for. What are you talking about? Where would I go? You know of a better deal than this? Ain't no better deal. That's right. That's right. And there's something to be said for loyalty. So the text is saying, you dance with the one that brung you. <laughs> what does that mean? Whoever brought you to the, the soiree, the party, you dance with them. Huh? <laughs> what does that mean? The, you don't forget the elders and the people and the men and women of God that got you started, that brought you the gospel, that put up with your junk as babies and helped get you through. You, you don't forget the people that were there and prayed with you and believed with you when you needed something, stood with you, even believed in you and didn't write you off when other people did. You, you don't forget that. You don't forget that. And you know who's done that more than anybody? God. God. And, and, and such a ludicrous thinking is that because people let you down, you're going to quit God. And that's what you see over and over again. Somebody let somebody down. Somebody betrayed them or just had no more use for them or quit them or whatever. Uh, a, a fellow believer or even a minister or a loved one or a spouse or whatever. And so they just quit going to church. They just quit uh, praying. They just quit reading their Bible. God didn't let you down. He didn't fail you. Just because a human did, you're going to quit God. That means you really are dumber than you look. <laughs> Somebody say, not me, not, not me by the grace of God. I got enough sense to know that even if people messed up, yes. God didn't mess That's up. Right. He yeah. said, I will never leave you. Right. I will never forsake you. That's true. That's right. That's real. Hallelujah. Thank you, Go with me to the book of Revelation and get ready to, get, uh, to be stirred up. Huh? Could you take some more stirring up? Stirring up to what end? So that you never quit God. Get to the end where you realize like Paul, I'm about to be out of this life. I'm about to leave here. I'm about to be done with this thing. And you can say, I've fought a good fight. Hallelujah. I finished my race and my course. And the faith I have kept. I didn't turn loose of it. I held on to it. What you will see in the book of Revelation is uh, exhortations from the head of the church, Jesus, by his angel, to the seven churches that were in what we call Asia. And it was... Uh, uh, you know, he commended them some, in some of these verses. He corrected them in some of these verses. But the reason we have this today is because his words to the churches are the same. They never change. Some people have tried to divide these up and, and, and make them into different ages and what have you. But actually the scripture didn't say that. There were seven churches there. They all existed at the same time. And we're still, uh, we're, you know, it was the church at uh, Laodicea, the church at Philadelphia. Well, this is the church at Branson. That's right. And there's the church at Sarasota. Right. There's all the churches, all the different places. And the head of the church still walks through the midst. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
of the candles and the churches. And he still has given gifts to men. And these, and these ministry gifts. And, and none of that's changed. This is going on the same. But I want you to notice in particular where he would say, to him that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying to the churches. Because that is still alive and pertinent to us today just as much as it was when he said it. In Revelation, the, uh, the second chapter, we're going, it's about uh, seven of these, of course, to the seven churches. And then there's another one or so after that. You got time? Yes. This will help you. Yes. Why? Because what you find is, what the scripture said is that um, the one that's born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So when he said, when Paul said, I have fought a good fight, what fight? The good fight of faith. I, I have finished my race. What kind of race? It's a faith race. And I have kept the faith. Well, well first John says, uh, what's the victory that overcomes the world? It's our faith. The reason you won't, if you finish your course and do what you're put to, to do down here, it won't be because you had no challenges. Huh? It won't be because you had no obstacles or no issues. In this world, in this life, with your flesh, and all you don't know, oh yeah. There will be multiple issues, multiple opportunities to give up, to quit, to be offended, to be weary, to be disillusioned, grow discouraged and weak, and quit. But if you don't do that, the only other thing you can do to keep going ahead, you've got to over come what is in your way you got to overcome the mistake the problem the past you got to overcome your confusion the depression you've yielded to you got to overcome huh other people letting you down not being there for you heartbreak soul hurt you got to somebody say overcome Overcome. If you're going to make it all the way to where you can say, I finished my race. I've kept the faith. What would we know without ever having met you? You an overcomer. You overcame that, and then you overcame that, and then you overcame that. And then that something bigger hit you than you'd ever thought you had to deal with. But you trusted God and believed greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you overcame that too. And you kept on overcoming until one day you looked up and it was time to leave here. Hallelujah. But this thing about, you know, people without even saying it, they have this idea that if there's any kind of challenges or difficulties, I don't understand it. I'm a faith person. You know, well, what do you think? It's just smooth sailing and, and the enemy's just going to stand by and let you do all the will of God and not even try to interfere or cause you a problem? No, that's wishful thinking. That's living in a fantasy world. The enemy, you got an enemy. He's got a bunch of wrong spirits that he can assign to cause you problems and if he can't get through to you he'll try to work on people close to you and if he can't get to them he'll try to work on people close to them but he, he, he's or people you have to do business with or people you work for or customers or the list goes on and on and on but there's not a day they don't show up to work you say well I'm taking the month off he's not what do you mean? 
He is going to be some kind of conniving, sneaking, deceptive thing to rob you, steal from you, destroy something in your life, kill something in you or around you every day. Makes you dislike him, don't it? (laughs) But bigger is he Greater is he, smarter is he, stronger is he that's in you than he that's in the world. But you got to yield to that strength. If you just lay down and quit, the Holy Spirit's not going to pick you up and force you to do anything. You got to give him something to help, something to bless, something to work with. I want you to say it out loud I'm born of God, I'm an overcomer. Not a quitter. quitter. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. You need to remind you every time something jumps up in your life that ought to come out of your mouth. Well, I'm an overcomer. Yeah, but we got this. Yeah, but I'm an overcomer. That's who I am. That's what I am. That's my spiritual makeup, my spiritual DNA. It's what I am to my core. The scripture says so. First John says, if you're born of God, have you been born again? Then you're born of God. And it says, if you're born of God, you are an overcomer. That's what you are. And there is a list this long of good things that happen to overcomers. And you read about it, especially in these two chapters right here. So do you want to know what happens? Have you read the list of good things that happen for the quitters? That's because it's not there. (laughs) Uh -uh. These things don't happen for quitters. They happen for overcomers. Are you ready? Re- uh, Revelation 2, 7. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcomes. I want you to raise your hand and say, that's me. That's me. Now, every time we read that phrase, without me having to say it, I want to hear that. I want to see a hand go up and I want you to say, that's me. To him that overcomes. <laughs> to him that overcomes. I will give to eat of the tree of life. You know what happens when you eat of the tree of life? You live forever. You never die which is in the midst of the paradise of God. That means you have to be in paradise to have access to the tree. Somebody say, that's me. I'm an overcomer. I will get to see paradise. I will get to eat of the tree of life and live forever. Verse 10, verse 10, he said, fear none of the things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil will cast some of you into prison. You'll be tried. You'll have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. He that has ears, has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That includes the church at Branson and the church at Sarasota. He that overcomes (laughs) yeah, (laughs) shall not be hurt of the second death. The second death is eternal death. It's appointed unto man to die one time. If the Lord tarries his coming, you and I live out our life and our spirit will leave our body. But when you know the Lord, the scripture said, he said, if you believe on me, you'll never die. 
And you won't even taste death when you leave. You won't go through the jaws of death. You won't go through any terror. It'll probably be a few minutes before you realize your body's even dead. You'll be so enraptured, but your big angel right there with you and talking to you about that he's taking you, you're ready to go to Barton be the Lord. Do you want to go the scenic route? <laughs> There's some really neat stuff you should see in the Milky Way. Do you want to go by there? <laughs> on, on the way, <laughs> it's going to be amazing beyond anything we have thought or asked. He that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. When you breathe your last, you leave here, you've done all the dying you will ever do throughout eternity. And when all those things begin to transpire and the white throne judgment and, and all of that, that has nothing to do with you. You're saved. Names in the Lamb's book of life. Verse 17. Verse 17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcomes, I will give to eat of the hidden manna. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll give him a white stone. In the stone a new name written which no man knows except he that receives it. Secret, you, secret handshake, uh-uh. <laughs> secret name, secret stuff. What kind, what kind of secret are we talking about? Secrets only God knows type of thing. You talk about being in the inner circle. <laughs> special name, special stone, eating of hidden manna. Huh? God says, I got some special manna. <laughs> Reserve store. You'll get to partake of it. I'll get to partake of it. If you don't quit, if you keep the faith, if you're an overcomer. Revelation 2.25, that which you have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcomes and keeps my works to the end, say it again, keeps my works to the end. Now, there's, there's some... Real confusion in the body of Christ about who loves God. People can say they love God, but it doesn't mean they do. Hmm? Hold your place here. Go to John, the 14th chapter. Hold your place. You got time for another thought here? This is important. Because we're talking about keeping the faith, and he just got through saying... If you keep my works, listen to John 14, 15. John 14, 15, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. That's what Jesus said. So how do we know somebody loves him? Keep his commandments. Plural. In other words, what I tell you to do. The things I've told you to do. Do it. Well, what if you don't do what he told you to do? Even though you say you do, it's just not true. In verse 21, verse 21, he said, He that has my commandments and what? Keeps them. He it is that loves me. And he loves me, he'll be loved to my Father. And I love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said, well, Lord, how is it that you'll manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said, if a man loves me, this is the third time we're seeing this in a couple of verses. If a man loved me, what, what will he do? What will he do? He will keep my word. What does that mean? He won't act like they're not even in the Bible. He won't throw them away. He will hold on to them. He, will, he or she will believe them and do them. That is proof positive that person loves God. Other than that, it's just empty talk. 
There's all kind of people that say they love God, but they don't care what he said. They even know what he said and completely ignore what he said. And it's not for us to judge anybody except ourself. Do I love God? How do we know? Whatever he tells me to do, if I love him, that's what I'm going to do. That's the acid test. He goes on to say, verse 23, if a man loves me, he'll keep my words. My father will love him. We'll come to him and make our abode with him. He that loves me not, what? Keeps not my sayings. And the word you heard is not mine, but the father's which has sent me. Tell me, how do we know who loves God? You don't respect God any more than you do his word. That's right. Hmm? Yes, yes. Mm-mm. Cannot be. It's what, that's what he revealed. In 1 John 2, just put it on the screen, 1 John 2 and 3. It says, hereby we do know that we know him. 1 John 2, 3. We know we know him. And here's how we can tell who actually knows God and who doesn't know God. How do we know We know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. So if somebody says, well now look, I know all them scriptures are there, but I know God. And I love God. And so they just ignore the word. No, they don't know God. And they don't love God. You know, the psalmist said, uh, he said, you, you thought I was such an one as yourself to individuals that were off. And there's a lot of people have recreated God in their image. And they imagine that God thinks just like them. And that them and God are like this, you know. But then they hear something in the word or they read something in the word. But, ah, uh, you know, no, that's all passed away and. That's changed and that's not for us. And, well, they're just proving they don't know God that's right. and they don't love God. That's right. If you love God, you love his words. Yes. Is that right? Yes. If you know God, you know something about his words and what you do know of it, you keep it. Yes. If he says do it, you do it. Yes. If he says don't do it, don't do it. you don't do it. That's right. right? That's who knows God. That's who loves God. He went on to say, whoso keeps his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. And that's how you know that we are in him. He that says he abides in him ought himself so to walk even as he walked. Well, how do we know Jesus loved the father? He did exactly what the father told him. Is that right? All the time. He never rebelled against the Father. He never disobeyed. He never ignored. He said, I didn't come down from heaven to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I do always those things that please him. Go back to Revelation. That's extra. No charge for that. (laughs) Back to Revelation. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 2. 25, 26, and he that overcomes and keeps my works to the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Say what? Who's going to be in charge? Over the nations, plural? You. You. If you're not a quitter, if you're an overcomer, who who are these written to? Overcomers. He that overcomes. He will rule them with a rod of iron. No more elections. (laughs) As the vessels of a potter, they'll be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father and... I will give him the morning star. I ain't never had a morning star. Who's this for? Who's this for? 
Everybody? No. No. Most of the world's not even a believer. Hmm? Is it for everybody that goes to church? Sadly, no. It could be. But no. Because so many people just, they won't fight. They won't overcome. They won't hold on to the faith. They won't hold on to serving God. They get disillusioned. They get hurt. They get offended. They quit. Somebody didn't do what they wanted them to do. We had, how many people do we have in the first days of this church that quit and left because I wouldn't do what they wanted me to do? Yeah, we won't, we won't call names or talk about it. But they said, well, can't we do this? And, and I said, no, no, can't do that. Well, we've got to, at least you're going to let us do this. And I said, no, no. And so they said, well, bye. But then they had said the Lord told them to come. See, something, there's a disconnect here somewhere. Well, he knew who was going to be here. He knew who was going to be leading. Though what they didn't know is that a week and a half before in the floor praying, seeking God about how this church was supposed to go, the Lord got straight with me. And this is what he said. I mean, it's etched in me. He said, Keith, if you're always giving in to people, who's leading this? I said, well, it wouldn't be me. He said, you're going to have to stand before me and give an account of how this thing was done. And so you don't need to be letting people lead you. You need to be seeking me and doing what I'm directing you to do. And so that was fresh in my mind. And then they're asking to do all these things that the Lord didn't say do. So I just kept saying, no, 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 sorry, no, no. I smiled when I said it, no. <laughs> <laughs> but they left. I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Do you have an ear? Yes. I got an ear. Yes. Who's he talking to? Me. Huh? Me. No, he's talking to overcomers. That's me. Oh, 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 okay. All right. You want to hear some more? You talk about benefits. To the overcomer, you talk about a future. Revelation 3, 5. Revelation 3, 5. He that overcomes, the same will be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot his name out of the book of life. That means your name's going to be in there forevermore. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Out of all the millions of the redeemed and billions, whatever that number may be, there'll come a time when the master calls your name. Not you plus a group. Your individual name and he's going to say, they are mine. In front of the Father, sitting on the throne, in front of the angels, and that their name has a permanent place in the Lamb's book of life and will never be removed, will never be blotted out. Is that written to everybody? No. No. To him? A her that overcomes. <laughs> hey. Woo. Yes. Yes. 311. 311. There's a couple more of these. I mean, one of these would be worth not quitting. 311. The Lord said, Behold, I come quickly. I'm coming soon. Hold that fast that you have, that no man take your crown. That means they could. If you listen to lies and you believe lies and you quit, and you quit church and you quit God's people and you quit God, you could be robbed. Hold on fast to what you've got. Don't let anybody take your crown. Say that loud. Ain't nobody taking my crown. 
Verse 12, to him that overcomes, oh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. He'll go no more out I'll write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. I'll write upon him my new name. Whoo, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is, this is beyond a medal or jewelry. You overcomers, of the redeemed will be unique in the creation of God forever. Not an angel, you're above an angel. Not like any humans that might ever be created thereafter or any other kind of a being. You are unique. And when people see you, they see the name of Jehovah God in you and on you. And they know your residency is in the new Jerusalem where God lives. Where God lives. Where God lives. What's your address? Well, I, I live where God lives. I stay with him. Same town as him. <laughs> Who's going to live on your street with you? Other? <laughs> Overcomers. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hey, <clears throat> glory to God, glory to God. Verse 20, we're almost done. Verse 20, Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in to him and sup with him. He with me. He's, he's not going to force his way into any heart. If you don't open the door, you don't invite him in, it's not going to happen. He's not going to override your will. Verse 21, to him that overcomes, You don't want to get left out of this. No. To him that overcomes. Okay, all right, that's better. That's better. I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Huh? Say what? Sit with me. Head of the church in my throne, even as I also overcame. Did Jesus fight the good fight? Did he finish his race? Did he finish his course? Did he keep the faith? Is he an overcomer? Does he get some benefits? From having overcome, from being an overcomer. He said, peace I give you. Not like the world gives you. He said, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And he put that same spirit of overcoming that was in him and on him in you. And on you. So it's not like you just have to work it up yourself. All you got to do is not quit and let him help you yeah. at every juncture and never, ever, ever give up Amen. and turn loose of the faith yeah. and quit. Yeah. To him that overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Now that is very Precise language. Where is Jesus seated? At the right hand of majesty on high. And where are you and I going to get to sit? Huh? 
Beside Jesus? Beside Jesus? Somebody says, how's he going to do that? With all I don't know, but I, I'm sure he's got it figured out. I'm sure there's a way. In the spirit, things are different. They don't, there's not the limitations of the physical like it is here. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And then in 21, near the end of the book, you see another one. 21.6. He said, it is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hoo, hoo, hoo. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. I will give to him that's a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And he that overcomes shall inherit all things. There was too much for him to go into right then. Too many things. Too far. Too numeral, numerable. Too great. Because see, we're talking about over a period of eons now. To he that overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he will be my son. Mm -mm -mm. Child of God. Is it worth overcoming some things? Huh? Is it worth enduring hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ? Is, is it worth, even then you got knocked down, hurt, getting up? I said getting up and, and brushing yourself off. And even though you were terribly disappointed. Huh? Huh? Even though things just went way off from what you had hoped and thought you were believing that they would be. And even though people that you thought you would never be betrayed by, they quit. They let you down. They go crazy. They go off the rails. Tell me about you. Tell me about you. Huh? I'm an overcomer. Not in my own strength, not in my own knowledge, but in complete dependence on the greater one inside me. All I got to do is stay hooked with him. All I got to do is just keep saying, yes, I will continue. Yes, I will get up. Yes, I will continue to believe. Yes, I will stay hooked with you. And if you'll keep taking those steps of faith, you'll find the strength will keep coming. And the answers will come and the knowledge will come and the help will come. And if you lost your best friend, he'll give you five that were better than them. And people write you off. It's a big world. It's a big church. There's a lot going on. Just say, Lord, I'm available. I'm available. Use me. Send me where you want me to go. I'll stay where you want me to stay. And life is very, very short. This is not going to last much longer. You can keep it together for a few more days. You can overcome what the enemy throws at you. Somebody say, I can. I, can. I will. I, will. I, am. I am an overcomer. An overcomer. <laughs> Stand on your feet, everybody. Hey! Hey! Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey. Hallelujah. What are we going to sing? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've got the victory living inside of me. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Altar workers, would you come to the front? Church does not have to be dull and boring. Because God is not dull and boring. In order to be an overcomer, first you got to be born of God. Then you got to have a made up mind. We don't know who's watching or who's in the house here in Sarasota, but everybody affirm or reaffirm your faith. Say, I believe in, in my God, creator of heavens and earth. I believe in his son, Jesus, who went to the cross, paid the price for all my sins, all my failures, all my mistakes. And I believe God has raised him from the dead. He's alive right now. King of kings. Lord of lords. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Healer, my Protector, my Provider, my everything. Thank you for saving me. And I am born of God. And I am an overcomer. Gotta keep pressing on. Well, I can overcome. This ain't no time to turn back. No place to go, slide. I gotta keep pressing on. Well, I think you helped me preach that today. That was, that was good. That was good. Glory to God. If you confess Jesus for the first time today as your Lord, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you're coming back to the Lord, don't rush out of here. These folks are ready to celebrate with you, pray with you. If you got a question about anything else, the Scripture said if you confess Jesus before people. He will confess you before the Father. So you got to overcome that shyness, that fear, that insecurity. And you got to stand up and don't care who sees or knows. Huh? Somebody might have seen you come in here anyway. So you might as well get all the benefits. Being one of us. Hallelujah. One of us overcomers. Hallelujah. Sing it as you go. I got the victory living inside.